Okay, now I am ready to put the grip reel seat on the rod. This particular one has, there is a slight groove on the bottom of this. So your reel seat, and it, give, it gives the ring a little more space on there. So this groove needs to be on the bottom. So what I did was I marked, I put two marks to help me out opposite of what that groove is. The reason I put the two marks opposite of the groove we have here, we have our spine marked. And I had a question yesterday, do you, why do you put it, do you put it on the spine or opposite the spine? Well, it doesn't matter a whole lot, but for rod weights that are up to say four, say from zero weight up to four weight, you, we keep the eyes opposite of the spine. So this mark is opposite of the spine. So when I put this on, I want to keep my mark on the handle lined up with my spine. So that way I know that the real seat is going to sit right on the spine. The reason we find the spine is we want to keep the eyes on the spine or opposite the spine. We don't want the the eye the spine one quarter, you know, on the side of the of the eyes because just the action that that goes to the action of the spine. On rod weights that are 6, 7 or higher, you we they usually put the uh, guides on the spine just gives some I guess they feel that's better for when you're fighting bigger fish when you're doing a small rod it's putting them opposite the spine is okay you can you can put the eyes on the spine on a smaller rod too just the, the main thing is they either have to be on the spine or opposite the spine because that spine is the strongest point and you don't want it on the side because it's going to cast, uh, make, make your rod cast bad. So, that being said, we're also going to put, when I mix up the epoxy, I'm also going to put the tip top on. Before you put the tip top on, or before you get your glue mixed up and stuff, it's a good idea to test fit your tip top and you can see that's hanging there and I'm turning the rod and it's still hanging there. So there's plenty of space in there for the epoxy to, to secure it. And of course I have this, uh, I'm going to put the eyes opposite the spine. So I'm going to line up my tip top with the mark that I have on the tape denoting where the spine is. So I'm going to put it with the, line it up with the marks. And then the rest of the eyes are going to line right up with the tip top. Now we're ready to do the actual epoxy mixing and applying to our rod blank and putting our real seat and handle on and also our tip top. So here we have, I have a flat surface here and here is the instructions for a rod bond. It says mix equal parts by volume of each component in a suitable mixing container. Blend thoroughly for about two minutes at temperatures above 62 degrees. Mixed material is useful for about 45 minutes. Apply a small amount of mating, two mating parts, join and wipe away excess. Clamp is not required unless a minimum glue joint is desired, such as cork rings. Cure for 24 hours. Remains tough and flexible indefinitely. Tips for using. Measuring and mixing. Just eyeball it. 
a dab of each component on a flat surface then look to be sure there it is an equal amount to each portion then with a spatula type tool simply sweep the two components together across the flat surface as though you were putting butter on bread by this sweeping motion thoroughly blends the two better than any stirring motion could do what I'm going to do is I'm going to open one and I'm just going to take I don't need a lot just going to take a scoop out of there and put it on and I'm going to wipe that off pretty good actually have a paper towel here I'm going to wipe that off go ahead and cap that off take the second part the resin and scoop out the same amount place it on my paper make sure you have about the same amount I'm going to put just a little bit more on there and then we're going to mix them together And actually, at this rate, I can get several rods from this. And then it says just to mix them together as if you were buttering bread. So I'm just going to mix them together as if I was buttering bread. Now, I have it mixed, and... Obviously, I didn't, I didn't mix a whole lot because of the fact that I don't need to fill a lot of gap here. But one thing I also did was, I there's my spine mark, but I also placed this just close to maybe three quarters of an inch or an inch from the end of where the handle is going to be. So I know to keep the epoxy below that point. Then I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to smear it on. Don't really need a lot because of the fact, like I said, that it's, it's a pretty tight joint to begin with. So I get it on there. I'm going to take the big chunks off because obviously that's going to get pushed right out. Now I'm going to take my handle. Be careful not to touch this because then you're going to be touching other things. I'm going to put my handle on. And I'm going to slide this in place and I want to remember I want to line up my mark on my on the plastic on my handle with the uh, mark for the spine. I can kind of give it a little bit of a turning motion there. I'm going to make sure I keep my fingers clean. I'm just going to slide this right down into place. You can see I'm pulling a little bit now. Now I don't have any any glue coming out the top, which is fantastic. I'm going to take my popsicle stick and I'm going to wipe the bottom. Now, what I need to do is, I need to take a little bit of that plastic off because I'm going to be putting this hood on, this hood butt cap on. So 
So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where it's going to be. I just eyeball it here. So I have that little piece of plastic off. Now that butt cap should cover everything. Now I have the tape removed. I'm going to put my ring on there first. And then I'm going to put my butt cap on there. I'm going to put a little bit of epoxy on there. Just a small amount, I'm going to put my butt cap on. And I just kind of push everything down. Make sure my ring or my mark is lined up with my spine mark. And there we go. Get that out of the way. Now I'm going to take a damp paper towel and I'm going to clean off what came out. One final look and see that alignment, which is good. Although the only other thing, well there's two other things that I need to put on here is the winding check and the hook keeper. So I'm going to take the winding check right now. I'm going to put that on because I'm going to use the glue on that. And you can see this is pretty tight. It's going to grow as I go down, obviously. It's rubber. Get it over my tapes. And I'm going to bring that all the way down. The 45 minute op, uh, 45 minute working time is nice because I turned it. So I'm just going to take some of, and I'm just going to place a small amount on there. And I'm going to slide that winding chip down into place. Take my damp rag, I had a little bit sticking out there. Now for the butt, or for the tip top, there's plenty on my stick already. I have to make sure I get that mark. And I'm going to just wipe some on the tip. Going to take the tip top. This is some sticky stuff. Again, and line that up with my mark and my mark is right there it's actually opposite so I have to turn it and then I'm going to wipe the excess 